So in today's video, I'm going over why I don't like Ubuntu. Now, I made another video called Ubuntu's the Devil, and it's gotten a lot of views, but a lot of people roasted me in that video, and rightfully so, because it is the worst received video on this channel by far. However, I didn't state really definitive, specific reasons why I don't like Ubuntu, so that's what I'm gonna do in this video, and you're not gonna have to watch the whole video if you just wanna get the bullet points here. And they are, number one, I don't like its update cycle. I don't like how it does updates. Uh, number two, I don't like the GNOME desktop environment, that stock look and feel and workflow. Number three, snaps. I don't like how it's centrally controlled and, and just used in this environment and how people are getting vendor lock-in in Linux to canonical, which is, is scary. And then four, I don't like a lot of its old history. Its business practices is something that raises an eyebrow. Some of the things it's done as a company have just been downright bad for the consumer. So those are the four things I'm covering in this video. So let's jump on the Ubuntu desktop and go over these things. So here's my first reason. It's updates. I feel, it almost feels reminiscent to Windows to me. It constantly is prompting me like this. Hey, update your software. I close out, I'll reboot. This will reprompt me and say, hey, there's updates available. Please update. And then also it's a little worrisome, especially when you go into here and you have, uh, let's go into all, you'll see this live patch. I've gotten rid of this. I've deleted it and gone into the system settings, removed it, and then it doesn't update and it reinstalls a lot of this stuff like Ubuntu software store on updates. I don't like these packages. I remove them for a reason and it just feels kind of forceful. So it's update cycle is reason number one. Now, reason number two why we're in here is kind of the same thing, and it, it really goes into the desktop environment. Uh, GNOME, most people know, I don't really a big fan of GNOME or GNOME as some vets call it. Uh, it feels kind of clunky, and some of this is just how it's laid out. You see these animations and those types of things. While this makes it look a little pretty, a lot of times it does make it feel clunky and a little bloated, it feels like. So I've always said this about GNOME and why it's not my favorite, but it also kind of compounds onto reasons why I don't like Ubuntu. Uh, however, you can customize this. However, if you're going to really customize GNOME and start making it look like Windows and other things, which I've done videos on how to do this, it's just not a good idea. If you're going to go ahead and really change a lot of things about how GNOME functions and uh, a lot of the aspects of GNOME, you should probably just change your desktop environment to something that more closely resembles your preferences. That's what I've done and I've been so much happier since doing that. So if you're not a fan of this workflow, which many Windows users coming over aren't a fan of this workflow, uh, I would switch over to Kubuntu, which has KDE by default. So if you're going to just have other stock settings, I, I never recommend a vanilla Ubuntu. Uh, sometimes I do recommend Kubuntu, which I do like because it has that KDE look and feel, and it gets rid of this gripe of why I don't like vanilla Ubuntu. And that's just the GNOME desktop environment, as I'm just not a fan of it. But I do know there are some big advocates. And honestly, if you are want to, you know, if, if you do want to go ahead and try GNOME and really learn it, you need to learn its workflow. You need to use GNOME how it's intended to be used. And uh, I just have no interest in doing this. So that's why I don't like it. However, I will have a little caveat here. I absolutely love Nautilus. Its file manager is by far my favorite file manager. So one bright spot of GNOME for me is the Nautilus file manager. I I tweak this out a little bit, but my goodness, it is very pretty. It just feels nice to me. So I do love its file manager and why you see me sometimes use it on other desktop environments, even though that's kind of frowned upon. All right, so let's get into reason number three, and that is snaps. Snaps are something that is used and it's very easy. I've even done videos on how to use snaps and also utilizing it for, let's say, uh, next cloud server. It's really easy to set up snaps and in the server environment, it's not as noticeable, but it still is. It, it's a little bit cumbersome. So like, let's say we go into terminal and we go sudo snap install chromium. This makes it really easy to install something 
but at the same time, it runs just a little bit slower. And another bad thing about Snaps is its central repository is basically owned by Canonical. It's proprietary. They're back in server source. Nobody can really get to that except Canonical. So it's very reminiscent of the Microsoft Store. It, it it's got that vendor lock-in feel to me, and that's so anti what I want to get away from. I, I really don't recommend snaps because of this. I always say use flat packs instead of snaps. But as you see here, I went ahead and installed Chromium, and it installs, and it's so darn easy and simple. That's why so many people love snaps. Uh, but I caution people about using snaps just because, well, it's owned and run by Canonical. Everything in it is curated by Canonical. If Canonical wants to start charging or putting other, you know, paid apps in there, they totally can, and it is a locked store. So I caution people from really using uh, Snaps that much, but at the same time, I gotta admit, it's so darn simple that I see why people do it. So if I were gonna use this through an app package, Chromium, you got to install some of the dependencies, and sometimes those dependencies aren't found or, or it makes it a little harder. But the fact they're moving towards this centralized store, I don't like. And the fact that Chromium was working just fine using APT, so let's uh, go ahead and remove this. All right, so Chromium's removed. But I wanted to like do some digging. Why would they do this? Is it just all nefarious, like I, I've said here? Not really. It's not to push people towards the Snap Store. Maybe a little bit is there. But also, there was an article I read. And I went directly to uh, Chronicle's website, which is this right here. It's, it's snapcraft.io. And they specifically said, hey, we're moving everything in pretty much Ubuntu 19 and past to a Chromium Snap. The reason being is just for system integration. They really need to do a lot of work apparently, and it was kind of cumbersome for them to keep up with APT or the app package install. So they decided to put it in a Snap. This does mean it runs a little slower than if you did it through APT, which I'm gonna go ahead and show that real fast. Um, but it's the reason being is just for more integration and the ability to, to make sure everyone has a seamless experience. So that's the reason for Snap's push on Chromium and also a little bit of that window lock-in, I'm sure it is kind of nice locking people into the Snap store, getting people used to it. But uh, this is a big reason why I just don't like Snaps and I don't like Ubuntu. So some of the history is also why I don't trust Canonical or Ubuntu and why I don't want to use them as a desktop environment. One, if you just Google Ubuntu Amazon spyware, uh, I think around version 14 or 15, they actually bundled in and were tracking users and turning over that information to Amazon. Uh, they did this obviously for monetary reasons, but it, the fact they even thought that this was gonna be an okay thing gives me pause for concern. So the second big thing uh, that kind of in their history that I really kind of puts a bad taste in my mouth was the Ubuntu One project. They tried to do like this complete cloud suite, kind of like Google does, and kind of get their feet wet into that realm and try and monetize it using proprietary software. Another reason why I don't like this, uh, but it was discontinued in June 2014. It pretty much flopped, but I, I think it was on the market for several years and people were using it. Uh, but it, it's also something that just kind of like, ah, you know, it's it's one of those things that I don't like any of these monetization methods they've tried out in the past, and it makes me worried about their future. And one final thing, and this is a tech rights article, and I don't like tech rights. Uh, I think they're very tinfoil hat-ish, and a lot of their uh, sources are just very hearsay, very wishy-washy. But at the same time, I wanted to go ahead and give this third aspect of, of part four here uh, about the proprietariness. And them actually bundling in NVIDIA drivers, which is what this article is about. And they're saying, hey, this is really messed up that they're making it by default. You can just install NVIDIA drivers. And they're doing this mainly just for ease of use. People just want to turn their computer on and have it work. And you can't do that with an NVIDIA graphics driver. That's why I use AMD graphics drivers here. But at the same time, uh, I actually respect Canonical in this regard 
using Ubuntu's NVIDIA proprietary drivers because if you have an NVIDIA card, you want it to work and you're going to download those drivers whether or not they're open source or proprietary. So this whole article I thought was kind of junk and I was going to just kind of throw out. Uh, I wanted to go ahead and give this point of view because this is some, uh, I, I want to say, very, very fringe ideas of some people saying everything has to be free and open and that's not my uh, beliefs and I want to go ahead and just kind of put this to balance out uh, this video a little bit. Um, then including Ubuntu's proprietary drivers is a good thing mainly because well people need their graphics cards to work and uh, using the NVIDIA proprietary drivers is fine. Otherwise people were using PPAs. It was kind of hacky and you could do like the third party install tick boxes. And it was just an unnecessary step that everyone was going to do anyway. So them adding this and installing it by default is something that I, I'm a bit of a, hey, I think it's a good thing. I, I don't mind it in this regard. So I don't want you to think that I'm completely against all proprietary software because some of it, well, is just a necessary evil. And them kind of tearing Canonical apart of Ubuntu for doing this, I, I think is just a little silly. And there you have it. That is the Ubuntu desktop. Why I don't like it. Why I don't like this distribution. I think it uh, is pretty horrible. And the company itself that backs it, I don't particularly like. I think they've made a lot of bad decisions and I think they continue making bad decisions. So I don't see much of a future. Why I never recommend Ubuntu, at least the vanilla Ubuntu experience. There have been times I've recommended Kubuntu because it doesn't have a lot of the problems with the updates or the desktop environment but it still has a lot of those backings that uh, scare me a little bit, to be honest. So those are the four reasons why I don't like it. And now let me know your reasons why you do, because I'm sure the comment section people are already feverishly typing away, and I always look forward to reading all these comments. But at least this should shed a little more light of why people say I don't like Ubuntu and why I specifically don't like them. But with all that said, thank you to all my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one. And I'll see you in the next one.